Oh, hey, buddy, it's your old pal, Scott, and this is Let's Talk Tabletop. Now, online, in the modern world, we're aware of all sorts of scams, and unfortunately, the miniatures industry is not immune to that. What am I talking about here? I'm talking about the scam that is wasting your time on painting to a ridiculous level, and more specifically, the scam of subassembly painting. I know this sounds ridiculous, but hear me out. Now, I'm a busy guy. I'm sure you guys are as well with work and family and hobbies and all sorts of stuff. So I see a lot of people stress out over trying to keep up with whatever heavy metal is painting currently or what they see in White Dwarf or what they see Duncan paint. It's just it's too much stress. And if you enjoy painting, that's one thing. Go ahead, knock yourself out, paint every eyelash on that Space Marine Sergeant if you want. But for the rest of us, it's usually not necessary to put that much effort into your painting. Obviously, miniatures look better with, if they're painted. And obviously, you should be doing your best in everything you do. But it doesn't mean you have to completely tear yourself up over a job that does not match whatever's on the box of what you bought. And one thing that I see that's a total scam of your time, it's a theft of your life force, that's subassembly. I'm going to show you a lot of uh, examples of my miniatures, and not a single one of them has ever been subassembled. And they've been dry brushed using my method I've talked about before called dry lighting. And it's just primed black, and then dry brushed, and then highlighted with a dry brush, and you pick out some details. But if there's darkness in the armpit, nobody's ever going to notice. If your Space Marine is doing the old tried and true pose holding his bolter like this, more than likely, nobody's going to see on the inside of your arm and nobody's going to see this side of the bolt gun, especially if it's one of the older ones where they're holding it real close to the chest, like the push fit ones. Nobody's going to see that. So why spend all the extra headache and all the extra time, unless you're enjoying yourself, to paint things in pieces just to glue them together? That seems so silly to me, and I've never given that time of day. Now, another thing that I find to be a total scam is painting things on the sprue. Have you actually seen people paint stuff on the sprue? To me, this is utter madness, okay? Sure, it's easy to get to, right? Because it's all laid out flat on the sprue, okay. But then when you clip it off, the flash, there's still going to be little pieces that you're going to have to scrape off and clean off. And then, of course, those spots have not been primed and they have not been painted. So then you're going to have to touch it up and paint it again. And then you're going to have to assemble it, which, of course, occasionally your super glue will leave like that white fog if you're not careful. So not only did you spend the time to paint a bunch of stuff that probably doesn't need painting, such as armpits and behind uh, guns and potentially the crotches of people if they're wearing capes or kilts or whatever. Not only have you wasted your time doing that. But now you're going to have to spend more time to paint them again. And you've painted stuff you didn't need to paint. So it's the whole thing seems like a stupid idea. Now, of course, this probably sounds like I'm taking it way too seriously. And this is not something you should get upset about. Admittedly, I'm not upset at all about it. But I definitely think it's a scam. All these people that say you need 17 layers of paint. All these people that say that you got to watch a video on how to paint yellow or how to paint black. If you would like to watch those videos and you enjoy it, no harm done. But if you think that you can't just base coat it yellow and give it a serif and sepia wash, then you're crazy because you can and it works. <laughs> like I tell people all the time, people are like, I don't know how to paint black. I'm like, two steps, prime it black and then dry brush it with Eshin Gray, a light dry brush of Eshin Gray. You're done. Like, there's nothing else to do. That's black. And, of course, your other details or whatever. But people seem to overcomplicate things. And to be honest with you, unless you're using contrast paints, I really think priming white is also a scam. Because it wastes your time. Unless you're using contrast paints. Once again, I prime, prime my whole model white, right? Well, now, I can't skip over the armpit 
or it's going to be white. And that might actually show up. So now I have to coat every square millimeter of this miniature in paint. When, you know, if you don't hit a spot with your brush, it just stays dark. And that looks like shadow. Like, black priming is the way to go for most people for your average run-of-the-mill tabletop paint job. And you don't need to subassemble it. You just don't. I know a lot of people are going to... I don't even know how you defend it, to be honest with you. You know, there have only been a few miniatures I've ever painted in subassembly, and the reason why is because they were so complicated that it was really hard to paint it without painting in subassembly. I'm not talking about a Space Marine. I'm talking about uh, Glutos of Scorleon, my guy for um, uh, Heat and Knights of Slanesh. That miniature had so many parts to it that I was afraid I wouldn't be able to get my brush in between all of them. And I had to paint that in subassembly. So I'm trying to think of actually another miniature I actually had to paint in subassembly. And I really can't think of any. Um, obviously, I think like the Triumph of St. Catherine for Sisters of Battle, that would probably need a subassembly because there's so many miniatures, you know, close to each other. But by and large, you never have to do that. I think unless you're enjoying yourself and you just paint to enjoy it, if you want to get the job done, you prime it in black, you dry brush it, and you forget about those crotches and armpits in the backs of the bolters because it doesn't matter. You know what else doesn't matter? And I might get some flack for this. The back between the Space Marine and his backpack. If you just get paint roughly in that area, you're good. You don't need to paint the whole thing. Nobody will notice. <laughs> It's crazy. Once again, this is geared towards the people that really fret over it and and they're trying to do some sort of crazy paint job where it's really not necessary unless they're trying to go into like uh, paint competitions or a golden demon or something like that. Now, if you want to spend all that time, that's fine. But I used to know a friend that was so crazy with his attention to detail that he would paint the underneath of his Space Marines boots. And I'm not talking about like Vanguard veterans or somebody that's like running or whatever. No, no, no. No, just regular Marines. Every single Marine. He painted the bottom of the boots before gluing them on the base. And I asked him, why on earth did you do this? And he's like, oh, well, because I would know it's not painted under there. And I'm like, okay. I mean, I guess if you like painting. But the funny thing is, is he didn't like painting. That's the funny thing, is that um, I'm so he'd get himself worked up for months on end before he would get painting on something. And then he'd have to batch paint the whole thing. And then he'd spend two full months of every waking hour after work painting these miniatures and fretting over it. And I'm like, you're making it so much more than it actually needs to be. He is also the one that would paint the inside button panels inside his Land Raider. I bought a Land Raider from him one time and I opened up the the little hatch in front and all of the screens have little markings like radar and stuff on them. And I'm like, who is going to see this? Why don't you just glue the flap shut? And he's like, oh, well, I know it would be like, I would know it was like that. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> some people like to torture themselves. And like I said, if he enjoyed it, that'd be a different story. But he didn't. So, anyway. Let's go take a couple looks at some of the things I've painted. Let's start off with Glutose Scorleon as the example of something I actually did have to subassemble and paint separately. Because it was just so darn complicated, I was afraid your br my brush wouldn't fit in. So this is Glutose. I'm super excited about him. I love that army specifically for him and for uh, Sigvald. And uh, just love that army. Now, here's a bunch of people, Brutality War Bands and other things, that you will not notice that I did not paint the armpits or the crotches or behind their cape. A lot of times, I don't paint behind capes either. Like, if, if my eye cannot see it and it just falls into shadow, then I don't paint it. I just keep it primed black. And it's crazy to me that I would have to explain that to anybody because a lot of people... It never occurs to them that they don't have to paint like they're going to try to win a golden demon. And uh, we got this guy. 
I really like him. And look, his armpit, his armpit is not painted. Did you notice? Nope. <laughs> like, and no, these are not like award winning paint jobs or anything like that. Like, I get that. They're tabletop standard, you know, base coat, dry light, etc. Maybe a wash. But this is what you can achieve just at tabletop standard. And I don't think anybody would say that these miniatures look bad per se. You know, they don't have 17 different layers and eight washes, but they don't look bad. And I get a lot of miniatures painted. I can paint probably five Space Marines in under two hours. I mean, I actually have a speed painting thing where I painted an entire monster and a hero for Cruel Boys in, I don't even remember how long it was, 30 minutes, something like that. Now go check out that that video. It was actually pretty cool. It's a time lapse, more or less. It's sped up. But anyway, do you paint armpits? And do you think it's a scam if people are told they have to paint armpits and behind shields and between chests and bolters? Because I think it is. Also, are you with me about white primer being a, a scam unless you're contrasting? I don't know. I don't know. It's what big white primer doesn't want you to know. That's what it is. That's what they're not telling you. Anyway, hey, look at these guys. You see these guys right here? Yeah, they are my Patreon patrons. And I love each and every one of them, especially Grendel. Grendel has been with me for years and has been a huge supporter. So I love you all. Anyway, thank you for watching the show. Please like, subscribe, etc., etc., for my ramblings on painting and miniatures and game theory and everything else. And I will see you next week. <laughs>